Welcome to Science and Technology Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. There is more to AI regulation than safety. Prince nicknamed One Pint Willie by ex-rugby star. Chinese chip gear leader achieves key breakthrough, Backer says. Alibaba chief takes direct control of under-pressure Chinese e-commerce business. The final credit Suisse postmortem. There is more to AI regulation than safety. Financial Times. The UK government's focus on safety and its regulation of AI is a sensible approach, but it will not be enough to address the complex ethical questions that arise as AI systems become more capable, according to an op-ed in the Financial Times. The author argues that debates about the use of AI in fields such as film and literature highlight disagreements about the purpose and value of art, and that similar debates will arise in many other areas of human activity. The author concludes that such decisions should be made by politicians, rather than AI companies. Prince nicknamed One Pint Willie by ex-rugby star, BBC. Mike Tyndall has joked about Prince Charles's drinking habits, calling him One Pint Willie. Tyndall made the comments on a podcast with his wife, Zara, who is the prince's cousin. Tyndall said the nickname referred to the prince not being a good drinker, although he added that rugby was a sport that involved a couple of beers being sunk quite often. Tyndall won 75 caps for England and was a member of the squad that won the Rugby World Cup in 2003. Chinese chip gear leader achieves key breakthrough, Backer says. Bloomberg. Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment Group, SMEE, a Chinese chip-making equipment manufacturer, has reportedly achieved a technological breakthrough in chip-making gear. The company has developed a lithography machine that can be used to make 28 nanometer chips, according to its major state-backed shareholder, Zhang Jiang Group. SMEE is seen as China's best hope to contend with ASML Holding, the Dutch company that has a monopoly on the cutting-edge extreme ultraviolet lithography systems required to make advanced semiconductors. The U.S. Department of Commerce blacklisted SMEE last year as part of efforts to thwart China's attempt to build a world-class chip industry. Alibaba chief takes direct control of under-pressure Chinese e-commerce business. Financial Times. Alibaba CEO Eddie Wu has taken direct control of the company's core e-commerce business as it loses market share to rivals PDD Holdings and ByteDance. Wu is now the CEO of Alibaba's e-commerce unit, as well as the chief of its cloud division and group CEO. He unexpectedly took over the cloud business in September, pushing out the departing group CEO. Wu has now replaced Trudy Dai as CEO of the Taba and Tmall e-commerce platforms. Alibaba's shares have fallen around 75% since their peak three years ago, before Beijing cancelled the US listing of affiliate Ant Financial. The Final Credit Suisse Postmortem Financial Times US private equity firm General Atlantic is reportedly in talks to acquire Actis, an infrastructure fund manager, as it seeks to diversify and add assets ahead of an expected initial public offering. Actis is being examined for a possible sale or IPO following the success of its 2012 acquisition of Lebra, which has benefited from the cost-of-living crisis. The move comes as General Atlantic and other private equity firms look to capitalize on the growing interest in infrastructure assets. The value of infrastructure assets under management is expected to grow from $4 trillion in 2021 to $5.3 trillion by 2023, according to data provider Precheen. How will professional services handle the great stagnation? Financial Times. Professional services firms in the UK are facing a talent shortage as the post-pandemic boom in demand for services coincides with a fall in attrition rates. The hiring frenzy following the pandemic saw attrition rates top 20% for consultants, far higher than the long-term average of 12%. However, this year, attrition rates have fallen to around 5-7%, to leading to a lack of available staff. The big four firms have recently launched redundancy rounds, while some have delayed offers to new joiners. The situation risks exacerbating the sector's boom and bust tendencies when the recovery comes. The end of the debt bubble has put the Chinese dream on hold. Bloomberg. China's property sector is facing a major crisis as the government cracks down on property speculation and aims to create a more resilient housing market. The debt squeeze has led to several dozen developers defaulting on their debt, leaving projects unfinished and triggering boycotts on mortgage payments. As a result, around 5 million workers could face unemployment or lower incomes by 2026 if the housing sector continues to shrink. The debt squeeze also marks the end of a boom for investors and bankers, who enjoyed juicy yields from the sector. However, Beijing wants to end speculation and create a more sustainable model focused on boosting domestic consumer demand and new technologies. The campaign to clean up real estate risk has shattered confidence, leaving people feeling poorer and undermining efforts to get consumers to spend and invest in new businesses. 
The crisis will also leave scars on the nation's housing stock, with unfinished buildings left empty and builders scrambling to finish projects with shoddy work before running out of money. Despite signs of a return to growth, the property market is only about halfway through the correction it needs. Porsche's race with Ferrari is really no contest. Bloomberg. Porsche's stock price has fallen by a third since May due to fears that the company is susceptible to an economic slowdown. Compared to Ferrari, Porsche is seen as catering to the affluent rather than the super-rich, and investors view Ferrari as a safer investment. Porsche must prioritize exclusivity and high prices to recover, even if it means foregoing potential sales. The German carmaker is struggling in China, where delivery slumped by 40% in Q3 and has also had to delay the launch of its electric Mekong SUV until next year due to software issues. Hey there, folks. It's your resident six-degree doctor, here to bring you the latest updates from around the world. Buckle up, because we've got quite the mix of news today. First up, we have a thought-provoking piece from the Financial Times about the regulation of AI. While safety is certainly an important aspect, the author argues that we can't overlook the ethical questions that arise as AI becomes more capable. From debates about its use in art to its impact on various areas of human activity, the author suggests that politicians, not AI companies, should be the ones making these decisions. So, let's raise a glass to the future, where one pint Willie might just be an AI politician. Speaking of pints, ex-rugby star Mike Tyndall has given Prince Charles a playful nickname based on his drinking habits. One pint Willie might not be a good drinker, but hey, at least rugby involves a couple of beers being sunk, right? I'm sure the prince takes it all in good fun, especially coming from family. Now, let's move on to the world of technology. Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment Group, SMEE, a Chinese chip-making equipment manufacturer, has achieved a breakthrough in chip-making gear. This is big news as China aims to compete with Dutch company ASML Holding, which currently holds a monopoly on the cutting-edge technology required for advanced semiconductors. Looks like SMEE might just be the underdog to watch in the chip industry. In other tech news, Alibaba CEO Eddie Wu has taken direct control of the company's core e-commerce business. With rivals gaining market share, Wu is stepping in to steer the ship and hopefully regain Alibaba's dominance. Talk about a hands-on CEO. Let's hope this move pays off and brings Alibaba back to its former glory. Now, let's take a look at the financial world. U.S. private equity firm General Atlantic is reportedly eyeing a potential acquisition of infrastructure fund manager Actus. As the interest in infrastructure assets grows, General Atlantic is looking to diversify and add assets ahead of an expected IPO. It seems like infrastructure is the place to be these days, and who can blame them? With the value of infrastructure assets expected to rise, it's no wonder everyone wants a piece of the pie. Meanwhile, professional services firms in the UK are facing a talent shortage. The post-pandemic boom in demand for services has collided with a fall in attrition rates, leaving firms scrambling to find available staff. The big four firms are even launching redundancy rounds due to the lack of talent. It's a classic case of boom and bust, but let's hope they find a way to navigate this talent shortage and keep the sector thriving. Finally, we have a story from China's property sector. The government's crackdown on property speculation has led to a major crisis, with several developers defaulting on their debt and leaving projects unfinished. This has not only triggered boycotts on mortgage payments but also jeopardized the livelihoods of millions of workers. Beijing's aim to create a more resilient housing market might be noble, but it's certainly causing quite a stir. Looks like the Chinese dream of a booming property sector is on hold for now. Last but not least, we have Porsche's race with Ferrari. Unfortunately for Porsche, their stock price has taken a hit recently, causing concerns about their vulnerability to an economic slowdown. Investors seem to view Ferrari as a safer bet, given its reputation for catering to the super-rich. To make a comeback, Porsche needs to focus on exclusivity and high prices, even if it means sacrificing potential sales. Let's hope they can rev up their engines and get back on track. And there you have it, folks. Another whirlwind of news from around the globe. Now, it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on AI regulation, Prince Charles's nickname, or any other story that caught your attention? Drop your questions and ideas in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the fascinating world of news. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective.
Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.